All right, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so we will continue the lecture for today. All right, so uh, 13 of you guys, tak apalah, saya start lah eh. So, um, to recap back, okay, uh, so about the last lesson that we had was uh, a week before the semester break, right? So, uh, we already started chapter 4, okay, so uh, chapter 4, you know, kan, kita nak develop, we are developing the design equation for the reactor. So, kalau you remember, the week before, already uh, done on the batch reactor. So today, I will uh, continue the next one, uh, PFR, and then I will continue with CSDR. So uh, as I always tell you, lah, kan, expectation, uh, memang when I explain the formula, you will get uh, a little bit confused or you feel that it's a bit overwhelming, which is very, very normal. Okay, so bila saya, uh, when I teach you how to develop the equation, uh, you don't have to worry too much. Kalau tak paham pun macam the equation tu uh, is being derived, it's very, very okay. But as you can see, uh, the questions that I will ask you in the tutorial, nanti when you do tutorial, is all application of the equation. Meaning yang penting, at least you understand, okay, what are the difference of the equation and most importantly, uh, how do we apply the different types of equations? Sebab as I told you, chapter 4 ada sampai 30, 40 equation kan? So, it's impossible to understand everything. Definitely, it's possible to memorize. So, you don't have to memorize. Uh, Understanding too, of course, uh, kenapa, kena, why sometimes I explain the derivation is about I also would like you to at least know macam mana equation tu sampai sebab kadang-kadang kalau macam kita uh, when we have equations sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming kan tapi at least kalau kita faham tak payah faham semua pun at least kita tahu macam mana kita dapat develop equation tu uh, that is also already enough so today lecture if you find it a bit heavy it's okay, right? Tapi yang penting kita kena faham macam mana application dia and then macam mana equation tu akan berubah and kenapa dia berubah, okay? So, in comparison to BASH, uh, flow reactor, PFR ke, CSTR ke, equation dia jadi a bit complex and you can see it can be very, very long. Saya tunjuk tau equation dia akan jadi panjang sangat sebab tu memang tak possible untuk memorize. But maybe you will ask, kenapa? Why does this occur? Okay, so this occurs because of two different uh, factors. One, of course, design equation PFR to sama, meaning in regardless of the situation, the very first equation, design equation too, is the same. But what makes it a little bit complex is because the phase of our reactant, meaning are we talking about liquid phase ke? We're talking about gas phase. Sebab when we talk about different phase, uh, the equation becomes totally different. Why? Because of the assumption of the volumetric flow rate. Okay, sebab uh, for this tutorial tadi, mungkin kamu dah dengar kan? If it's liquid phase, uh, inlet outlet volumetric flow rate ni sama. Maksudnya kalau kita ada cecair kan, so halaju isi padu cecair ni masuk dan keluar reactor sebab reactor ni kan open system right? PFR, CSTR ni kan flow in flow out. So kalau dia liquid, uh, flow in it flow in flow out tu sama. Okay, so to scenario pertama if it's liquid. Unfortunately for gas, this no longer applies. Okay, kalau gas ni dia lain sikit tau sebab gas, uh, any change in temperature, change in pressure and in even the the, the chemical reaction itself, okay, will influence the flow in and flow out. Hence, flow in dah tak sama dengan flow out. Okay, sebab tu saja kenapa equation kita akan berubah. Okay, tapi dalam chapter 4 yang saya cover, chapter 4 ni setakat ni masih isothermal. Meaning, perubahan, there's no change of temperature yet. Okay, nanti dalam chapter 6, saya akan address apa akan berlaku kalau perubahan temperature. Tapi, kamu just ingat, the change of temperature affects the volumetric flow rate. Okay, so then next, pressure. Okay, so far yang saya ajar sampai hari ni, we still assume constant pressure, meaning there's no change of pressure during the reaction takes place. Okay, so two dia. Okay, but again, then the factor ketiga kan, the, the chemical reaction itself. So, bila flow in, flow out dah tak sama for gas, it will affect the concentration, how we express the concentration. So, kalau kamu tengok slide, belah kiri, belah kanan, you can see now, the concentration is expressed differently. Like, kalau liquid, Ca sama dengan Ca0 minus X. Cb sama dengan Ca0 in bracket, theta B minus B per A X. Yang ni, kalau kamu so, macam kamu tak ingat, dalam chapter 3 kita dah belajar. Tapi kalau, still cannot remember, it's fine. Nanti kita express, you will get it. But you see, kalau gas phase, 
CA sama, sama dengan apa? CA equals to CA naught 1 minus X. Yang atas masih sama. Sebab sekarang dia tambah the pembawah. The pembawah is 1 plus epsilon X. So, kalau ada perubahan pressure, jadi P naught. Tambah P naught per P. Perubahan tekanan, uh, perubahan uh, temperature change, tambah T per T naught. Tapi setakat kita assume sekarang constant pressure, constant temperature. So, yang P naught per P, T per T naught tu dah tak ada lagi. Okay. So, same for CB. Kalau kamu tengok gas, uh, liquid phase, uh, CA naught, theta B minus B per AX, right? Tapi when is gas, dia akan tambah pembawa juga. 1 plus epsilon X. Itu sahaja. Itu sahaja perubahan in the concentration, the difference. And then next, okay, menambahkan kompleksiti dia pula. Remember I told you, rate law. Sebab different reaction will have different rate law. So it can be a first order, it can be second order. Kalau second order pun ada dua kemungkinan. Sometimes it can be KCA square. It can also be KCACB. So KCACB pun consider as second order, right? Because first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B, total order is 2. Tapi rate law dia berlainan, Equation here, design equation pun will be derived differently. That's why that adds the additional headache when we are talking about uh, the rate law. Okay, so bila kamu tengok soalan uh, test, exam or let's say in real application pun, kamu kena consider this factor. One, phase, okay, the phase of your uh, reactions, the compound in your reaction, particularly your reactant. And second is to consider the rate law. So, kamu kena betul-betul tahu kalau reaction ni, apa rate law dia. Sebab the design equation will be changed accordingly. Okay. So, now that you understand this, then I can teach you how to derive the equation. Tapi, macam batch, PFR pun, if you remember, the design equation tu adalah integral. It involve an integral equation, right? So, biasanya kalau matematik, kamu kena belajar penyelesaian dia kan. Macam nak selesai uh, pengamiran punya persamaan. Okay, but in chemical engineering, in reaction engineering, kamu tak payah belajar macam nak selesaikan. Sebab penyelesaian tu dah diberi. Okay, it's given in the list of formulation. Sama list yang tadi sebelum ni kita guna untuk batch. So, maksudnya, bila kamu dah uh, kamu dah derive kan. So, when you reach to the integral part, by right, kamu just check saja penyelesaian ni. So, we will get the solution. Katakan integral ni, uh, this integral equation, solution dia apa? Kita check on the list of formulation. But of course, in your case, uh, you don't have to worry that much also. Sebab sebenarnya, like I said, it's an open book. And even kalau exam yang sebenar pun, physical exam pun, memang student can refer to it. Tapi, still, cabaran dia bukannya untuk mendapatkan equation. Cabaran dia how to use the equation to solve it. Okay. So, let me teach you one by one. How do we get the equation? Okay, how do we derive? Right, so let's say case yang pertama, we are talking about liquid phase dulu. Okay, sebab so liquid phase, gas phase, persamaan dia amat berbeza. So, you always refer nanti kalau test exam, kamu kena tengok. Kalau liquid, kena tengok mana satu. Kalau gas, kena tengok mana satu. Then, kena tengok pula rate law dia. Okay, so in this case, this is first order liquid phase. Okay, we're talking about the first order, maknanya minus RA tu sama dengan KCA. First order with respect to A and this is talking about liquid phase reaction. Okay, so what is the sequence? So, of course, we will always start with the design equation for PFR. So, kamu kena tengok, kamu kena tahulah beza dia kan. So, for PFR, volume. Okay, design equation dia in terms of volume equals to FA0 integrating 0x dx per minus RA. Okay, right. So next, let's see our reaction to first order with respect to A. So minus RA equals to KCA. So let's say kalau soalan tu kata the reaction is first order with respect to A. So minus RA sama dengan KCA. Third, write down the uh, concentration sebab this is liquid phase flow reactor. So CA equals to CA not 1 minus X. Ini daripada chapter 3 pun kita dah belajar. Okay. So next step. Senang je, combine 1, combine 2, combine 3. Ini, I call, I replace the minus RA in my design equation dengan rate law which is KCA. So, it become FA0 integrating 0x dx per KCA. So, again, if you are wondering why integrating from 0 to x, sebab in the reactor, this is a single reactor where they are converting from zero conversion to the desired conversion yang saya nak. Conversion A yang saya nak, desired conversion dia X. Sebab tu, bottom limit zero, upper limit X. Desired conversion yang kita nak. Okay. Then when you have this integral, we are integrating towards X. But you can see at the second step, we don't have X. right? Kita ada KCA. 
So tak boleh. Kalau kita nak integrate towards x, we must introduce x to the equation. So kamu kita dapat, we can't simply just baling satu x dalam equation. Rather, we will try to find the variables in the form of x. So fortunately, we know, right? Ca tu sama dengan Ca0 in bracket 1 minus x. So now it become k Ca0 in bracket 1 minus x. Okay, so when it comes to mathematics, I think you know, uh, variables that is not affected by x, you can take out from the integral part, meaning k dengan ca not ni takkan berubah dengan pengamiran x because they are only integrating towards x. So the k and ca not I can actually remove from the integral part and I bring it outside of the integral part. So it become f a not per k ca not. Okay, so dalam bracket akan tinggal dx per 1 minus x. So part ni, you don't open bracket. Okay, kenapa tak payah buka bracket, tak payah buat apa-apa? Sebab dah ada dalam list of formulation. Okay, dalam list of formulation, kalau kamu tengok, kita dah ada penyelesaian dia. The, the solutions given, if I'm integrating from 0 to x, dx per 1 minus x for that integral uh, equation, the solution is given as ln 1 per 1 minus x. Sebab tu, Macam saya kata, tak payah buat apa-apa pun. Tengok je dalam this formulation tu, apa dia punya penyelesaian. Okay, so the, the solution is ln 1 per 1 minus x. So you see now, already get volume PFR equals to, in the red color punya dot, red color punya font, F A naught per K C A naught ln 1 per 1 minus x. So part integral tu, saya just copy solution dia, saya combine saja dengan bahagian depan yang F A naught per K C A naught. So this is what we call as a form 1 means kan contohnya if I want to find volume okay you know F A naught you know K you know C A naught you know X you can find volume or let's say dia suruh kamu cari F A naught so dia beri kamu volume K C A naught dia beri kamu X kamu boleh cari F A naught so kamu kena faham equation tu tak fix tak semestinya kena cari volume so sometimes kena tengok lah macam real application lah sometimes kita dah tahu kita dah ada volume reactor tu kita dah tahu kita dah tahu K kita dah tahu C A naught kita tahu conversion Kita nak tahu pula molar fluorid yang masuk F A naught. So we can use the equation to find it. Okay. Now, the form 1 of the equation memerlukan for you, needs you to to know F A naught, K, C A naught dan X. Let's say I don't know F A naught dan C A naught. Let's say in the real application, you do not know or you don't have the information of F A naught and C A naught. Rather, you have information of inlet volumetric fluorid, V naught. So, let's say dalam kamu punya real plan tu, kamu tak tahu F A naught dan C A naught, tapi kamu tahu V naught, the inlet volumetric fluorid. So, how do we do this? You can still solve it because, kalau kamu ingat, there's a correlation, right, between F A naught dan C A naught. Remember, F A naught divided by C A naught is actually equals to V naught, the inlet volumetric fluorid. So the form 1 equation tadi tu, instead of writing as F A naught per K C A naught, in bracket log, uh, log 1 per 1 minus X, I can also write it in the form of V naught per K log 1 per 1 minus X. Meaning F A naught per C A naught tu, saya bahagikan, I divide it, I get V naught. So now I get the form 2 of the same equation of which I can find volume if I know Inlet volumetric fluorid, I know K, I know X. So, kamu tengok tak? Beza form 1 dengan form 2. Kalau form 1, I know F A naught, I know C A naught. I know K, I know X. I, I can find the volume. Form 2, if I want to find volume, I know V naught, I know K, I know X. I can also find the volume. So, kamu kena tahulah. When, which situation we need you to use the form 1, which situation you will use the form 2. Okay, then, we have the third form. Sebab tu saya kata banyak equation kan. Kenapa banyak equation? Sebab kadang-kadang, it really depends on the information given. Okay, the third form. Let's say you are asked to find the space-time. Remember tau? Remember you learn in uh, uh, chapter 3, we learn about tau, right? Space-time. Apa tu space-time? Space-time is volume of the reactor divided by the initial volumetric flow rate. So let's say soalan tu or the reapplication, kamu tak nak cari volume, tapi you are asked to find the space-time. So using the same equation, you can still find space-time, tapi you have to tweak a little bit the equation, kan? Sebab on the left-hand side, volume. On the right-hand side, inlet volumetric flow rate per k ln in bracket 1 per 1 minus x. So 
if the inlet volumetric flow rate I move from right to left kan matematik kalau move daripada kanan ke kiri daripada kalau dia ke atas dia move to key, move to the left hand side jadi pembawa right so now it become volume PFR per inlet volumetric flow rate so kalau volume per inlet volumetric flow rate adalah apa adalah space time right so now you got the space time so the space time for the PFR now equals to since dah tak ada inlet volumetric flow rate you're left with 1 per k ln in bracket 1 per 1 minus x. So now you can see you have three different form of the equation and you must remember this three is very specific kepada PFR, liquid phase, rate law minus RA sama dengan KCA. Dia kena fulfill all these three requirement baru kamu boleh guna equation ni. Kalau satu dia tak fulfill pun this equation is no longer valid. Ini katakan dia bukan liquid dah tak valid. Katakan rate law dia bukan minus RA KCA equation ni tak valid. Ketiga katakan uh, dia adalah uh, bukan liquid phase tak boleh juga. Okay so you must understand dia hanya kena fulfill tiga-tiga requirement ni PFR uh, liquid phase, uh, rate law dia minus RE KCA. Only you can use this equation. Then, ada form yang berlainan kan? Depends. Okay, it depends on information. Kadang-kadang kena guna form 1 or sometimes guna form 2 or sometimes the form 3 if let's say dia nak cari space time. Okay, so tambahan pula. Okay, kamu pernah belajar space velocity kan? Kalau dalam test 1, remember I ask you to do something like that, right? So then you must remember what happens to the equation pula kalau dia nak cari space velocity. So dalam notes saya, saya memang tak letak space velocity ni. Saya nak student pandai uh, need to know how to kaitkan space velocity yang you learn in chapter 3 and in this chapter 4 saya bagi sampai space time sahaja. Space velocity you have to figure out yourself. Macam mana equation tu berubah kalau kita nak cari space velocity. Okay so part saya tak bagi. I hope you can actually uh, figure out yourself. Tak susah, tak susah pun sebenarnya. You know how to do it. Okay. That done. Okay. Now we go to second order reaction. Okay. Masih liquid phase. It's still liquid phase. Meaning I change one situation. The two situations still valid. Uh, still as PFR. Uh, still liquid phase. I change one situation where now the rate law is minus RA equals to KCA square. So kamu kena tengok, kalau tukar rate law, even daripada KCA kepada KCA square pun, equation yang tadi dah tak valid. Kita kena derive all over again. So tu dalam test exam, that is the challenge. Sebab kamu ada banyak sangat equation, kamu dah kena tengok mana satu applicable kat situation yang mana. Okay. So now kalau second order, uh, design equation is still the same. Concentration expressed the same. As long as I don't change the phase, concentration is still expressed the same. Tapi apa yang berubah? Rate law. So sekarang minus RA equals to KCA square. So what happened to our equation? So what happens to our equation? So minus RA now, I replace with KCA square, right? Because the rate law change. Okay, sama je concept. When the integral part is KCA square, we cannot integrate. Sebab dia pengamiran dia, the integration is towards X. So as long as you don't have x uh, in the equation, it cannot be solved. So fortunately, we know CA equals to CA0 in bracket 1 minus x. But in this case, dah berubah sikit because I have CA square, right? So CA square jadi apa? Equals to CA0 square in bracket 1 minus x square. So bila when you square on the left hand side, on the right hand side, all the variables must be squared as well. So what do you become? K C A not square in bracket 1 minus X square. Okay, so kalau normal mathematics solution, uh, if you learn from mathematics, kamu kena buka kurungan kan, jadi kuadratik, kamu kena solve. Okay, tapi reaction ni, dia dah mudahkan hidup kita, they straight away give us already the solution. Meaning kalau kamu punya integral tu dx per 1 minus x square, kita dah tahu solution dia. Okay, so but before we go to that, then don't forget, yang k c a not square ni because they are, they won't be integrated towards x or in other words they won't change when x are integrated sebab dia tak berkait langsung dengan x so the k and c a not square tu you can take out from the integral part so so we get f a not per k c a not square yang kat bahagian luar tu yang integral part become 0 to x dx per 1 minus x square so sama je konsep dia katakan if you want to know how to solve it you check list of formulation 
part yang merah integral ni kalau when you are integrating 0x ah uh, 1 per 1 minus x square towards dx the solution dia sebenarnya adalah x per 1 minus x okey tu so solution dia terus dia bagi okey so what do you do solution combine sahaja the part yang tadi yang kat luar tu which is fa0 per kc0 square so now you get the first form of the equation to find the volume PFR, tapi ni adalah berbeza because this is for the second order reaction. So, tadi kamu nampak berbeza kan? First order line sikit, second order line sikit. Okay, so that's the first form. Same concept. Katakan you are, you don't know FA0. Okay, let's say you are given uh, inlet volumetric flow rate. So, equation tu kamu kena tweak sikit. Katakan saya tak tahu FA0, tapi saya tahu inlet volumetric flow rate. You can, you can still use the same equation, tapi you have to change a little bit. Because you know, if I have one FA0 at the top, and one CA0 at the bottom, so FA0 per CA0, I will get V0. So, atas tu sekarang dah jadi V0, dah tak ada FA0. Tapi yang kat bawah jadi K, CA0. CA0 tu satu je masih ada. Sebab kat bawah kan CA0 square. I can only divide by 1 CA0, right? So 1 CA0 remains. So in bracket, X per 1 minus X. So you get the second form of which both form pun nak cari volume. Okay, so kalau kamu tanya saya, mana satu yang nak guna? Yang satu you depends on the information that you have. Kalau kamu tahu FA0, kamu CA0, gunalah form pertama. If let's say you know V0, you can use the second form. Okay, and then lastly, the third form is for space time. Sama je konsep, kita pun nak cari space time. So, nak cari space time, maksudnya, the V0 on the left, eh, on the right hand side, bawa ke sebelah kanan, dia jadi division, right? So, volume per inlet volumetric flow rate, I get the space time. I get equals to, on the right hand side, it will be 1 per K, see, not dah tak ada V0, so V0 sudah pindah ke sebelah kiri, uh, then in bracket, X per 1 minus X. So you see in like uh, 20 minutes, kamu dah sebenarnya belajar 6 equation. So you can see, dia dia macam tak susah, tapi saya boleh faham it can be a little bit overwhelming. So same concept, I didn't put here how to find space velocity. Okay, it's sort like a homework from you for you to figure out bagaimana equation ni berubah kalau saya nak cari space velocity for this reactor. So specifically untuk tadi yang first order, this one is second order. Okay, so nanti kamu ada masa, kemudian uh, make sure kamu buat eh, cuma nak cari space velocity pula kalau saya nak cari untuk case-case yang ini. Okay, so next. Okay, ni adalah untuk uh, second order juga tapi uh, second order tadi KCA square, right? This one second order KCA CV. Okay, so kamu tengok equation jadi semakin panjang kan? Ni belum panjang lagi, ada satu lagi, lagi panjang. Okay, so nanti uh, kamu akan tengok lah nak selesai tu pun berempas pula sebab banyak sangat yang kamu kena selesai. So that's why they say reaction ni susah. Uh, saya faham lah, I can really accept that sometimes reaction can be a little bit uh, difficult. Okay, now. Case yang mana minus RA, KCACB. So, sama je. Saya hanya ubah satu saja. One only thing. The other two is still the same. It's still PFR. It's still liquid phase. So, concentration, design equation masih sama. But the rate law now become minus RA equals to KCACB. Meaning, first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B. So, bila kamu dapat soalan, katakan dalam test atau exam, kamu kena tengok betul-betul. Uh, rate law dia apa? Okay, kalau rate law ni, nak tengok equation yang mana yang nak digunakan. Okay, so... What is different in the question kan? Okay, now tadi we only re, we only need to know concentration of A sebab rate law dia KCA, KCA square. Yang sekarang ni, we are additional one. We also need to know how to derive for B sebab dia ada CB. Okay, so nak derive concentration B, CB equals to uh, for liquid phase equals to CA0 in bracket theta B minus B per AX. Okay, so original equation dia yang kita derive, dia mesti theta B minus B per AX. Okay, tapi, uh, this one kamu kena really understand. Okay, sebab nanti kita akan guna integral formulation kan, tadi saya ajar kamu integral equation tu. Uh, because of the limitation of the integral uh, solution yang tadi tu, so yang B per A dalam equation ni harus menjadi satu. It has to be one, only we can use the integral formula yang diberi. Okay, tapi don't worry, kalau katakan kalau nak exam ke, kalau nak test, I will make sure yang B per A, B per A ni lah nisbah stoichiometric coefficient dalam persamaan kimia tu kan. So, don't worry, kalau uh, let's say I come up with this question, I will make sure yang B per A tu satu supaya kamu tak payah uh, confuse kenapa tiba-tiba tak. Okay, but original dia mesti ada B per A. 
Okay, tapi bila kita nak guna integral ni, people itu harus menjadi satu. Baru kita boleh solve. Alright, so that's why you will see the equation is written as CA0 in bracket theta B minus X. Okay, kamu kena faham yang people itu bukannya setiap kali satu. Just like bila sampai integral part ni, dia menjadi satu. Tapi kamu tak payah bimbang juga. Memang saya make sure kalau kamu solve equation macam ni, memang B per A tu saya jadikan satu. Okay, done. Right, done. So now, we will solve it. We will combine again. Design equation, rate law, concentration. Okay, so the rate law minus RA, we replace with KCACB. Okay, sama je konsep. CACB tu, we change in the form of CA0 dan X. Sebab tu CA, we change into CA0 1 minus X. CB, we change into CA0 theta B minus X. Okay, sebab ada dua kali CA0, right? That's why you see in here, we get, we have K CA0 square. Satu CA0 datang pada CA, another CA0 comes from the CB just now. Okay, so same concept. F A0, K CA0, ah, sorry, the K CA0 at the bottom, we take out from the integral part. Okay, bukannya sebarangan Uh, ambil keluar. So macam mathematics ni bila kita nak explain, kita kena tahu kenapa. That's why sometimes I will explain to you so that at least you understand kenapa tiba-tiba bawa keluar. Sebab come, everything that we do in mathematics kena ada alas, kena ada reason. But sometimes we don't know right. So that's why you become a little bit confused. Kalau tak tahu kenapa tiba-tiba kena bawa keluar. So explanation dia is because we are integrating towards x. And ni unknown, unknown k dengan ca0 square ni takkan dipengaruhi oleh x. Kan ingat kalau k dipengaruhi apa? K dipengaruhi oleh temperature. Ca0 tu initial concentration. Tak kisah concentration mana pun, kamu prepare fresh solution tu, ca0 tu masih sama. Sebab tu dia takkan berubah kerana x. Sebab tu it can be taken out from the integral part of the equation. That's why it become fa0 per k ca0 square kat bahagian luar. Yang bagian dalam tu, in bracket, 0x dx per 1 minus x, theta b minus x. So, kalau dalam matematik, katakan kalau kamu belajar dalam matematik, <coughs> patutnya kamu kena buka kurungan, kamu kena darab jadi quadratic, right? But, for reaction engineering, dia dah mudahkan hidup kamu. Dia dah cari dah solution dia directly. So, if you check the list of formulation, If you have this integral yang bahagian merah ni, solutionnya dah diberi. Tapi solutionnya panjang. Solutionnya given as 1 per theta b minus 1. Theta b kamu pernah belajar kan? Cikgu 3 pun kita pernah belajar kan? Masih theta b yang sama. Tak berubah pun. 1 per theta b minus 1. Ln bracket theta b minus x over bracket theta b bracket 1 minus x. Itu yang tak susah. Ada bracket, ada semi bracket, ada sub bracket lagi. Okay, so bila nak solve ni pun, kamu, you have to be very careful. So, sometimes student dia dah boleh tulis equation dia. Tapi bila solve, dia terlupa pula part yang bracket. So, mathematics tu kena, kamu kena betul-betul practice. Eh. Kamu kena tahu kalau ada bracket, mana setiap kamu kena kira dulu. Okay, so then, don't forget, yang bahagian luar tadi, FA0 per KCA0 square tu masih ada. So, you get the form 1 to find volume. For the specific rate law, R minus RA equals to KCACB. Okay, so form yang kedua, again, if we don't know FA0, but we know V0. So, we can use the second form. Maksudnya, we divide 1 FA0 at the top. With 1 CA0 at the bottom, you get V0, right? So, V0 per KCA0. Yang integration part, yang solution dia, kamu copy saja. Tak ada perubahan. Yang berubah hanya bahagian depan sahaja. Okay. So, theta B kamu tahulah. X pun kamu tahu. So, benda tu bukan benda baru untuk kamu. Okay? So, the third form. Form apa? Untuk space time. So, sama je. We not daripada from the right. I move to the left. It become division. So, volume divided by volumetric flow rate. I get the space time. So, I will get equals to on the right hand, left hand, right hand side. A 1 per KCA0 in the bracket, the integral solution. So, dah berapa dah? 3, 6, 9. Half an hour, 9 equation. So, saya harap kamu faham kenapa sampai ada 9 equation. Sebenarnya kalau campur space velocity, 12 kan. If I include space velocity, actually 12 yang kamu dah belajar dalam masa 30 minit. So, you will understand why I say you got 30 or 40. In 30 minutes pun dah ajar 12 equation. So, space velocity setak letak. And when you have time, I understand you got a lot of other courses, bukan courses saya saja. I don't expect you to do immediately. Tapi jangan lupa, maybe kamu bila kamu belajar untuk test, sebab dalam test kedua, saya cover chapter 4, 5, 6. So before test tu, jangan lupa. Tulis juga, kalau space velocity, macam mana bentuk dia. Sebab I can also ask you in the form of space velocity. Okay, so a little bit homework for you guys when you have free time.
Okay. So done on liquid phase. So if you think liquid phase is complex, let's see gas phase. So gas phase lah yang akan memberikan kita equation yang paling panjang. But the good news is sebab equation dia complex kan. So kita hanya cover dua red law saja. Uh, KCA dengan KCA square. Kita tak cover KCA CB sebab nanti kamu tengok KCA square pun equation dia dah panjang satu kertas. Kalau KCA CB saya rasa ber beberapa kertas kot. So we only cover untuk gas phase KCA, KCA square kita tak cover KCA CB. Tapi it doesn't mean benda tu tak wujud. Wujud je. Boleh je berlaku. But the solution will be more complex and frankly Uh, red law yang quite common is usually uh, kalau untuk uh, uh, KCA, uh, KCA, KCA square, KCA CB. But untuk li untuk gas ni, gas gas KCA CB is not so common lah. But I won't say it won't happen. Dia boleh berlaku. So tapi penyelesaian ni jadi kompleks and you have to refer to uh, mathematics punya formulation to solve that. Okay so now when we go to gas phase, apa sekarang yang berubah? So sekarang yang berubah Dah dua benda, right? One, uh, the volume design equation sama. But I change two part, three things. Because now I change the rate law. It become KCA balik. Okay, saya buat balik tu KCA. I change the phase. But sekarang I do for gas. So, kamu kena betul-betul ingat. Kalau gas phase, dia tak sama dengan liquid phase. Sebab, again, concentration tu dah express berlainan. So, now CA equals to CA not in bracket 1 minus X per Pembawah tu dah ada sekarang. Kalau gas phase kamu kena ingat concentration tu pembawah tu dah ada 1 plus epsilon x. And then kalau dia ada perubahan tekanan tambah P not per P. Kalau dia ada perubahan temperature T per T not. Sebab dalam cerita tempat ni saya kita masih assume there's no change of temperature, no change of pressure. Sebab tu P not per P, T per T not tu kita tak letak. Tapi kamu ingat eh kalau ada perubahan tu kamu kena tambah juga. Okay alright. So now What do we do? Combine balik 1, 2 and 3. Okay, so bila kita combine, so minus RE tu dah jadi KCA. Saya skip satu step, saya terus letak KCA. Okay, second step. Sekarang CA tu tak boleh kan? Sebab CA tu is not in the form of X. I cannot integrate towards X. So I replace CA with CA not in bracket 1 minus X per 1 plus epsilon X. So sekarang you can see the integral becomes a little bit tough, right? Sebab dia ada tiga layer, A per B per C. Tapi kalau kamu ingat dalam mathematics, right? Kalau kita ada A per B per C, yang third layer tu naik ke atas. So jadi A, C per B. Okay, so dalam mathematics kamu ingat, you have A per B per C, the C goes to the top. So it become A, C per B. Okay, so that's what happens now. You can see the, eh, sorry. You can see the 1 plus epsilon x yang layer ketiga tu dah naik ke atas dalam integral dia. So it become 1 plus epsilon x per 1 minus x yang kat bawah ni. Okay, so then yang again the case ini not tu kita bawa keluar. As long as it got nothing to do with x, you can actually take it out from the integral part. So that's why it become f a not per k c a not. Okay, so bila kamu sampai integral part ni pun, you don't have to worry how complex dia pun dia akan ada solution. List of formulation tu dah ada solution dia. Okay. So solution untuk formulation ni untuk integral part ni is given as, kamu tengok dah panjang sikit kan dia menjadi 1 plus epsilon bracket ln 1 per 1 minus x minus epsilon x. So formulation yang integral yang solution, equation tu this is the solution from the list of formulation. So guna list uh, solution tu combine with the FA not per KCA not. So epsilon uh, for those yang tadi attend tutorial mungkin kamu ingat lah kita baru belajar kan epsilon sama dengan uh, dan chapter 3 pun saya dah cover. But if you don't remember epsilon tu sama dengan YA not sigma. Kalau kamu lupa Tak apa, for the sample tutorial lagi, mungkin kamu lupa sikit lah macam nak cakap salon kan. Tak apa, nanti tutorial hari, hari, kam, hari kamu hari Kamis kan. Hari Kamis nanti saya akan, uh, saya akan ajar tutorial chapter 3, kamu akan nampak yang part epsilon tu. So, epsilon yang sama, dia bukan benda yang baru. Kita dah pernah belajar. Tapi, if you forget, uh, for those yang dah tutorial, mungkin tak. For those yang have tutorial, it's okay. This Thursday, we will learn a bit, we will learn again. Uh, we will refresh back how to find the epsilon. So yang depan tu FA0 per KCA0. So kamu nampak kan perubahan dia just because I change the phase, 
although red law masih KCA, but because I change the phase, kamu tengok equation dia dah jadi very long, right? It become a longer equation to find the volume. So, the green one, the green font is, what's the difference? Kalau red font, if I know F A naught, then C A naught. The green font, if I don't know F A naught and C A naught, but I know V naught, the inlet volumetric flow rate, pun kita boleh guna because F A naught per C A naught is actually equals to V naught, the inlet volumetric flow rate. So, inlet volumetric flow rate over K, the formulation yang belakang tu is still the same and subsequently, the purple font is for the space time. Okay, so space time, okay, sama je, pindah je kiri ke kanan, the inlet volumetric flow rate, I will get the space time. Okay, so now dah berapa kamu belajar? Dah 12 kan? And don't forget, kalau space velocity, another 16. So, you already learn 16 equation dalam masa 40 minit. Okay, so again, space velocity ni saya tak letak, tapi uh, before test, before exam, make sure you write down macam mana nak cari space velocity for every situation. Because you can see, bila equation tu berubah, of course, the space velocity, how to find it also changes. Alright. So, the very last one for PFR. Sebab tu dia tak ada KCACB. Sebab kamu tengok, KCA square pun solution dia dah panjang gila-gila. So, nanti bila tutorial, uh, I really want you to practice untuk tekan calculator nak kira. Kadang-kadang student, uh, sebab macam tutorial sekarang online, saya tunjuk jalan kan. So, mungkin kamu rasa kamu key, kamu tekan calculator tu boleh dapat. Tapi bila test as a man, tengok memang ramai student yang dia tekan tekan dapat jawapan tu. Sebab again, dia mathematics lah. Bila kamu tengok ada kurungan, ada sub kurungan, ada square, kamu kena betul-betul practice to know to calculate the correct way even with calculator pun, student prone to do errors and mistakes in this, ok? Tak apa, nanti tutorial kita cover, nanti kamu ada masa kamu akan try kira sendiri, right? So, for the second case, it's when gas phase, second order reaction so, become minus RA equals to KCA square Okay, so kamu kena tengok the minus RA are replaced with KCA square. Tadi KCA, ni sekarang KCA square. Okay, lepas tu apa yang berubah? Uh, CA tu tak boleh dalam bentuk CA, right? It's in the form of CA not and X. Tapi sekarang dia adalah CA square. So, dia jadi kompleks sebab kalau CA square equals to CA not square. 1 minus X square over 1 plus epsilon X pun kena square. So, kalau mathematics, kamu ingatkan, kalau we square uh, left hand side, the right hand side, all the variables must be squared as well. That's why it become a little bit complex. Okay? And then, tambah complexity, dah ada tiga layer, right? A, B, A per B per C. Tapi, as usual, the C goes to the top. So, the 1 plus epsilon X square in the bracket goes to the top. Okay, divided by 1 minus x square yang tadi yang layer B tu masih ada. Dan yang KCA0 tu, I bring out. I will take it out. So, become FA0 per KCA0 square. Ni kat luar. Yang formulation, the red font here. Okay, the integral equation tu, as I told you. Of course, kalau kita nak solve ni, kompleks gila. That's why they give us the solution. Checklist of formulation. Uh, form solution yang paling last sekali sebab dia solution paling panjang. And the solution is given as... Ha, saya nak tunjuk, saya nak saya memang tak hafal formula solution dia. Sebab solution dia panjang is 2 epsilon in bracket 1 plus epsilon ln 1 minus x plus epsilon square x plus in bracket 1 plus epsilon square x per 1 minus x. The good news is that this is the longest equation that you need to use. Okay, that's the good news. Uh, the good news, another good news. Oh, tak payah pun hafal. The not so good news, penyeraan dia jadi panjang. So, memang student selalu this equation ni memang ramai student yang akan tumbang lah dikira sebab dia ada different, dia ada different operation. Dia ada lawn lagi, dia ada bracket, dia ada square. So, you must really practice to get the correct calculation for this. Okay, so then combine dengan FA0 per KCA0 square. So, we have form 1. Okay, form 2 tu kalau kita nak tahu in the form of uh, inlet volumetric flow rate, we not. Yang form ketiga pula, the form 3 is when kita nak cari space time. Okay, form 4 yang saya tak tunjuk ialah space velocity. Okay, so you that one you have to do by yourself lah, right? So, again, sama je konsep dia. Okay, so you can see, uh, hopefully, you can see kenapa we have different equation. As I told you, perubahan dia sebab tiga uh, types of reactor. Uh, phase and rate law. So, whenever you see questions, belum kamu nak pilih equation, kamu kena betul-betul tengok ketiga-tiga benda ni supaya kamu tak confused. I can change rate law, I can change the phase. Uh, so, kamu kena really, really check mana satu equation yang kamu digunakan. So, in total for PFR, 
24 lah kan? So, 24 equation in PFR by right. Sebab liquid gas, red law yang berlainan. Okay. Right, done. Okay. So then, uh, as I told you, okay, bila kita nak solve PFR ni, kan saya minta kamu, saya tunjuk jalan pengiraan semua kan. So, kamu ingat bila kamu solve, you use the final equation tau. Bukan kamu guna derivation tu untuk solve. Kalau kamu nak guna pengambilan tu pun, kamu kena solve until get the final equation ni, baru kamu ganti dengan nombor. Okay, so don't forget that part. In, for your case, saya dah mudahkan hidup kamu sebab saya dah cari the final solution. Your job is just use the final solution untuk cari the answer. Okay, you don't have to derive all over again. Okay, even kalau kamu nak derive pun, jangan pun ingat. Kamu kena derive dengan menggunakan variables tu. Jangan derive guna nombor. The number can only be replaced in the equation after the equation has been integrated, has been dah, dah kamer baru kamu boleh guna. Okay. Right? So, that's the meaning of this slide. Derive first, baru ganti dengan nilai. Okay, so, right. So, this is example 2. Example 2, saya takkan discuss as usual because information semua saya dah ada, penyelesaian pun saya dah ada. Yang saya nakkan daripada students is kamu practice, saya tak bagi jawapan akhir, saya nak kamu practice sendiri kira dapat tak jawapan akhir and if you have friends, you ask your friend to calculate together. I can assure you kalau lima orang kira kan, kebangkalan lima orang dapat jawapan yang berlainan or maybe tiga ke akan dapat jawapan yang berlainan. Very rarely all five will get the same answer. So, all the all the details ada calculation saya dah tunjuk. So, kamu kamu macam mana kamu nak buat soalan ni? Kamu tengok soalan. Senang je kerja kamu. Tengok soalan. Okay, tengok jenis reactor. Tengok red law, tengok the face. So, you know these three? Okay, you will choose the right equation. For example, dalam case ni, this is actually uh, second order gas phase, KCACB. So, equation yang paling panjang tadi yang kita derive, kan? Okay, so then, your next step, cari je nilai dia. Means, kamu kena ganti dengan nilai lah. So, kamu kena tahu epsilon berapa, so on and so forth lah. X, uh, K, C, not so on and so forth. Okay. So, when you replace all the value, Uh, as a homework for you maybe you can do even a challenge among you guys maybe you take five of you ke tiga empat orang cuba tiga empat orang tu kira tengok dapat tak tiga empat orang jawapan yang sama very unlikely semua orang akan dapat jawapan yang sama mesti ada jawapan yang beza-beza so then you will see siapa sebenarnya yang kira betul siapa sebenarnya kira yang tak betul and part mana tu yang betul tak betul okay so that's homework for you right Okay, so sekarang dah makin susah chapter tu. So, saya tak boleh macam everything given to you. You have to do a little bit of practice. Yes, ada soalan ke? Tak ada. Tekan. Ya, yes, Amma. What is it? Saya nak tengok balik soalan tadi. Tengok balik soalan tadi. Mm -hmm. Kenapa ya? Uh, sebelum tu. Sebelum tu, yang ni? Soalan yang ni? Uh. Kenapa ya? Okey, thank you. Okay. Saya nak snack. Oh, so, tapi slide tu ada. Saya ada tak dalam VIA ni saya. Kalau kamu tak boleh cash pun tak apa. Dalam VIA saya tu, uh, kamu klik tu ada notes tau. Memang all my chapter tu ada notes juga. Okay, make sure kalau tak dapat catch up lah eh. Dalam saya punya VIA tu ada notes juga. So, soalan yang sama juga. Okay, betul. Alright. Okay. So next one, sebab lagi 15 minit lagi, saya cover sikit untuk CSTR. CSTR senang. CSTR is very very easy sebab design equation dia tak kompleks. Design equation dia tak ada integral. It's a very linear equation. So CSTR saya paling suka nak ajar lah. CSTR is easy. Tapi sama juga, dia pun ada 24 equation yang berlainan. Kenapa? Sama je macam PFR. Kenapa? Sebab kita ada different phase different rate law. Sebab ada different phase, different rate law, we have different equation. So, in fact, not 24, it should be 28. Sebab, KCACB pun boleh untuk gas phase CSTR. Tapi, equation jadi panjang-panjang lah. Alright, so, I will go a little bit fast. Sebab sama je, konsep dia, uh, yang penting kamu kena faham the selection of the rate, uh, selection of the equation when it comes to the question. Okay, so, let's say I do now, First order, kita start dengan liquid dulu eh. Liquid, first order reaction. Okay, so apa yang berubah sekarang, uh, design equation dia berubah lah sebab ni CSTR kan. So, CSTR kamu kena ingat. CSTR, single reactor, equation dia Fa not X per minus Re. So, kamu kena bezakan tadi PFR. PFR tadi ada integral part, right? CSTR ni senang. Just Fa not 
X per minus Ra, single reactor. Okay, then red laudium, KCA. Let's say kita buat KCA. Let's say this is gas phase, uh, liquid phase. CA equals to CA0, 1 minus X. So what do we do? We combine 1, 2 and 3. Tapi this is much easier to combine lah, right? So first step, minus Ra, I replace with uh, KCA. Second step, I replace the CA with CA0, 1 minus X. Okay, so maybe you might ask, kenapa kena replace? Doktor, tak ada pengamiran kan? Tetapi remember, most of the time I told you, we won't know CA. Dalam aplikasi sebenar pun, jarang uh, engineers or the technologists will measure the CA. They can, we will always talk about CA0, the initial concentration, and we will talk about conversion X. Sebab tu CA tu pun kita akan jadikan dalam bentuk CA0 and X which is CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. So you get the form 1 of the equation to find the volume. Okay, so much easier kan sebab dia linear equation kan. Uh, form 2, kalau I don't know FA0, I don't know CA0, I want to find a V0. Okay, I, I know V0, sorry. Let's say I know V0. So FA0 divided by CA0, I get V0. So V0 X per K. CA0 tu dah tak ada sebab dah di, di, uh, so dia divided in bracket 1 minus x. So, I get the second form of the equation. And lastly, the third form is in the form of a space time. So, sama je. V0 kanan pindah ke kiri. I will get volume over volumetric flow rate. I get the tau, the space time. Bagian kanan left with x per k 1 minus x. So, macam tadi, uh, there are the different form of the equation. The first and second form to find volume. The third form is to find space time. And technically, we have the fourth form to find the space velocity. Okay, so again, we have time. Cuba tengok balik macam ni. Question tu kalau kita tukar untuk mendapat space ah uh, space velocity. Alright, okay. So, but there's additional part yang special sikit pasal CSTR ni. Okay, so I have to introduce to you one new uh, variables or one new uh, variables lah which is what we call as a dam caller number. Okay, so dam caller number ni dia very specific tau. Hanya ada dua situation yang kita boleh kira dam caller number which is uh, CSTR, only CSTR, PFR batch tak ada dam caller number, only CSTR and they only for two types of rate law, KCA, KCA square and third rule dia mesti untuk liquid phase sahaja so bit by right dam caller number ni hanya boleh dikira untuk CSTR, liquid phase, KCA and KCA square yang ada punya semua kita tak boleh kira dam caller number Okay, but you might ask me, kenapa nak kira dam, apa itu kegunaan dam caller number? Okay, so before I go towards its usage, let us first understand or de how to determine dam caller number. Okay, dam caller number for first order reaction eh. Okay, for first order reaction, kalau kamu tadi tengok, saya dah explain macam nak cari space time dia kan untuk CSTR yang baru tadi, space time CSTR untuk first order liquid phase KCA is uh, equals to x per k1 minus x. Okay, so sama je yang belah kiri. Okay, so what I do now, yang k on the left hand, uh, right hand side, this k, I move to the left. So from a division, it become multiplication. Dia naik atas kan? So kita akan dapat apa? Tau k, tau CSTR, the space time for CSTR, multiply with the k. So this will give us the dam caller number which is also kalau right hand side equals to x per 1 minus x. Okay. So, what is the function of a dam caller number? Okay. So, kalau kamu tengok dalam uh, equation ni, dam caller number tu adalah tau k, right? Okay. So, tau ni apa? Tau k, space time ni apa? Volume per initial volumetric flow rate. Okay. Maknanya sebelum, katakan sebelum kamu run the reaction, volume reactor we, we surely knows, right? Because the volume reactor tak volume reactor kita. Uh, volumetric flow rate, initial volumetric flow rate pun kita tahu sebab kita akan set how much the initial volumetric flow rate that I would like to use. So, space time I can determine before the reaction takes place. Next, K, reaction rate constant. So, you remember, biasanya kalau that the reaction is established, you know the temperature, you can already know the K. 
Okay, kamu kalau reaction tu reaction yang sangat biasa digunakan and kita, kamu dah tahu temperature dia, you will know the value of K before you run the before even you run the reaction. So when you calculate the tau K, okay, katakan kamu tahu volume, kamu tahu volume macam chlorate, kamu kira tahu multiply dengan K. Okay. The value that you give, that you get from the calculation be, is an indicator of the performance of your reactor in the form of the conversion means sebelum saya nak run reaction tu pun kalau saya kira dalam column number saya yang tahu K tu saya dah boleh agak berapa conversion dalam reactor dia so let's say katakan kamu kira dalam column number kamu 0.1 or less than 0.1 ok it tells you sebelum kamu run experiment pun sebelum kamu run reaction tu pun the conversion in the reactor will be less than 10% tak run pun dah boleh agak. Kira tahu K, volume per volumetric flow rate darab dengan nilai K, dapat 0.1 or less, you know that your reactor conversion can never be more than 10%. On the other hand, if your damn color number is 10 or more than 10, it tells you that uh, very likely your conversion will be higher than 90%. Meaning, very likely that if your damn color number more than 10, conversion kamu adalah tinggi lah, 90% and above. Okay, so you might ask me, kenapa nak ketahu benda ni? Okay, let's say kamu dapat dan column number yang kecil. Let's say you get dan column number less than 0.1. So, sebelum kamu run eksperimen tu, kamu dah tahu your conversion will be very low. So, it give you a chance to change. Sebab, tau key tu kan volume per volumetric flow rate. So, you can do what? You can still manipulate the volumetric flow rate. Of course, volume dah tak boleh ubah lah kan. Volume reactor dah fix. I can manipulate one volumetric flow rate. One. Second, I can manipulate K. How to manipulate K? K berubah dengan apa? K berubah dengan suhu. So, you might actually think, apa kata saya naikkan suhu? Apa kata saya tukar volumetric flow rate? By right, volumetric flow rate tu kena perlahan. You have to actually lower down the volumetric flow rate. Okay, so you lower down volumetric flow rate or you increase temperature, you kira balik dengan color number kamu. If your dan color number now is bigger or hopefully more than 10, it tells you most likely conversion kamu akan tinggi. So that's the function of then color number. It gives you a very good initial uh, guessing of the performance of the reactor. And most importantly, it tells you what can you manipulate in the terms of molar flow rate, uh, volumetric flow rate, or in the terms of K, which is temperature. So that's one thing that you can do. Tapi this is very good information. Okay, very good correlation. Tapi dia sangat limited. Only limited to uh, CSTR, liquid phase, KCA, KCA square. So if so happen you work in the real industry and your plant has fulfilled this application, fulfill this requirement, you can actually use this damn color number as a very powerful uh, guess towards your reactor performance. Okay. So done on damn color number. Okay, right. So now I go to second order reaction. Okay, so Still CSTR, liquid, tapi this is second order reaction of which KCA squared. So, saya just ubahlah. Part minus RA tu jadi KCA. Then CA tu, mungkin kau kata saya kenapa lah mesti guna CA. Kenapa mesti tukar dalam bentuk CA not 1 minus uh, CA not dan X. Sebab memang biasa dalam plant, kita tak measure CA tu. Kita tahu initial concentration and kita tahu conversion. Or conversion tu something yang kita nak achieve. That's why kita kena tukar cuman dalam bentuk. C A not 1 minus X. Tapi sekarang ni lah K C A square. So it become K C A not square. 1 minus X square. Okay, so we get form 1 in the red font. Kalau ada tahu F A not, tahu C A not. The green font if we know in the form of initial volumetric flow rate. Uh, yang purple tu dalam bentuk space time. Okay, so saya tahu you kamu tak apa. Kalau kamu macam... Uh, Important is kamu kena tahu nak pilih equation yang betul. Dan of course, nak tahu macam mana nak solve equation tu. That's more important to you. Right? Okay, so. Untuk second order pun, KCA square, we have them color number as well. Tapi them color number tu dalam bentuk yang berlainan sikit. Okay, so tadi from the second order KCA square, you know the equation given space time equals to X per KCA naught in bracket 1 minus x square. Okay, so for the second order, then color number dia, saya akan pindahkan k dan c naught. So now the then color number for second order reaction equals to tau k c naught. Tadi kalau first order, then color number tau k, right? Kalau second order, it become tau k c naught. Sama concept, if you calculate then color number, 
0.1 or less than 0.1, your conversion will be less likely 10% or below. If your damp color number 10 and above, very likely your conversion is 90% and above. And in this case, sama approach, you can still manipulate tambahan satu lagi parameter. Kalau tadi kita katakan kita dapat damp color number yang small, tadi kalau first order, we can only manipulate volumetric flow rate dengan K, right? Through temperature, right? Kalau for second order, I have one more that I can manipulate. CA0, initial concentration. So, what do I do? I can increase the initial concentration. Sebab, kamu tengok dia berkadar langsung kan. Then kalau number naik, CA0 mesti naik. Then kalau number naik. K mesti naik. Means temperature must increase. K increase. Then kalau number increase. Volumetric flow rate, dia kan tahu kan volume per volumetric flow rate. So, dia berkadar songsang. I want to get high then kalau number volumetric flow rate kena lower down, kena slow down, means kena kurangkan volumetric flow rate, then the damp color number will go up. So, kamu manipulate tiga parameter ni, you calculate back your damp color number, if it's more than 10, most likely conversion reactor kamu adalah tinggi. Okay, so that's the function of damp color number and why it's very powerful in casting the performance of the reactor. But again, unfortunately, it's very limited to only CSTR, liquid phase, KCA, KCA square, right? Okay, so uh, last one for today is already 526. Okay, so the last one is for KCA CB. So let's say kamu ada case di mana rate law kamu minus RA equals to KCA CB. Okay, so sama kan? Jangan lupa CA kalau liquid phase equals to CA not 1 minus S. CB part ni kamu jangan lupa kan? CB tu equals to CA not in bracket. Theta B minus B per AX. So, tadi kalau PFR tu saya kata sebab limitation integral, B per A tu saya akan match dari satu. Tapi dalam CSTR, ni dah tak bounded by the rule because we are not using any integral equation, right? So, B per A tu ada. So, B per A tu can be 2, can be 3, okay? Depending on the equation, right? Okay, so the rest still the same. They just combine the rate law, we combine the concentration, we combine the design equation and eventually we will get the three form of the design equation uh, for the form of FA0 and CA0, the second form in the form of V0, both form is to find volume and the last form is to find the space time, tau, space uh, space time for CSDR. Okay, so kalau, uh, for the first, uh, before I finish the class, Okay, uh, don't forget, okay, uh, sebab kamu akan start lab dalam minggu, tak silap saya, minggu 14, eh, minggu 13, 14 or something like that, I think. I can't remember. Uh, I think it's 13, 14 or 14 to 15, I can't remember. Sebab tu, uh, during the lab time, I, I won't do any class or any lecture. Sebab tu, saya ada hanya sampai minggu 13 untuk saya habis semua chapter tau. Sebab tu sampai... Kasa lab kamu minggu 14, 15, 16 kalau tak silap saya. So, meaning I have until week 13 to finish entirely the chapter. So, I will go a little bit fast. Tapi tak apa. Okay, kalau memang tak sempat habis by week, uh, saya, saya make sure saya habis chapter 4, 5, 6 lah. Sebab 4, 5, 6 ni pengiraan. Uh, chapter 7, 8 tu kalau tak sempat pun tak apa. Saya akan record video. But 7, 8 is okay. Sebab 7, 8 tu actually membaca. So, you can actually just watch the video. It will not be that hard for you to understand. Okay, so tutorial pun sama. I hope I can finish all the tutorial before you start your lab. But if I can't, if not able to finish it, I will of course record the video. Uh, for you to watch. Sebab 14 to 16 tu memang I, we cannot do any lecture, we cannot do any tutorial. Tapi don't worry, uh, I will make sure that uh, either I I cover the important chapters, yang tutorial kalau tak boleh cover, I will just do the video as usual lah. You can check from VLE. Maybe week 17 tu, uh, we will do a little bit of revision and then that's it lah for the semester. Okay, so if you see that I go a little bit fast, bukan saya sengaja nak pergi cepat, nak habiskan sendiri bercepat, saya terpaksa habiskan cepat sebab I have finished all by week uh, 14. Okay, right, so that's all for today. I will continue the rest of the chapter 4 on this uh, Thursday. Alright, thank you everyone.